Sounds True presents Self-Directed Brain Change. Rewire your neural pathways for happiness and resilience with neuropsychologist and author Rick Hansen. And now session one, the practice of taking in the good with Rick Hansen. Hello, my name is Rick Hansen. I'm a neuropsychologist, writer, and meditation teacher, and I'm really pleased to share the material in this program with you. I've been working with it myself for many, many years. It's some of my most favorite all-time material, and I just think it has the power to really change us individually, and I've seen the material in this program help hundreds, even thousands of people. In essence, it's simple. This program is about how you can use the power of ordinary moments to build lasting resources inside your mind, your brain, and your life. It draws on the latest breakthroughs in neuroscience about how fleeting experiences can become converted into neural structure. And this program is informed as well by the insights of both Western psychology and the ancient contemplative traditions. Of those traditions, the one that I'm most familiar with is Buddhism, and I'll be drawing on its very powerful model of the mind to take a look at what are the causes of suffering and what are the causes of the end of suffering. People have wondered about those causes for centuries all around the world, and what's remarkably true about the time in which we live is that we are now beginning to understand what are the underlying neural causes inside the brain, inside the three pounds of tofu, it, between the ears as it were, what are the underlying causes inside the brain of the mental causes of suffering on the one hand or happiness on the other? This gives us a fantastic opportunity to use the mind alone to change the brain and therefore the mind for the better. And we need to use these tools, especially to overcome, as we'll see, the hardwired negativity bias in the brain built into our brain over hundreds of millions of years of evolution in well-intended ways by Mother Nature to help our ancestors survive, but which, unfortunately, this negativity bias leads to a lot of unnecessary stress, unnecessary sorrow and loss and pain, and a lot of unnecessary conflicts with others. So it's really important for us to take charge of this Stone Age brain and guide it to a better place, and this program will show you how to do that. I'll both present really interesting information, at least to me, about how the brain works, and in particular, I'll take you through a number of guided practices that'll show you how to do this yourself, as well as, each time you do it, bit by bit, hardware happiness into your own brain. I came upon taking in the good myself as a young man to deal with my own needs growing up. I was very young going through school. I have a late birthday and I also skipped a grade and plus I was skinny and nearsighted and shy. So I was kind of king of the dorks as it were, but I had lots and lots of experiences of feeling like an outsider growing up. It's kind of pushed to the side, put down, devalued, not seen, the runt of the litter as it were. And what happened to me was really trivial compared to what so many people unfortunately have had to deal with, but it had a lasting impact. In psychological language, the normal supplies that are called healthy narcissistic supplies of feeling included and appreciated, liked and prized were for me a thin soup. So by the time I got to college, I felt like I had a kind of hole in my heart, an empty place inside that had a fair amount of pain wrapped around it. Then in college, somehow, and I still don't know how this happened, I stumbled on the fact that if I just would take a few extra seconds, 5, 10, maybe even 20 seconds at a time, with positive experiences that related to my own needs, then I could gradually feel like I was filling the hole in my heart. 
In other words, and usually in small ways, some buddies on the hall would say, hey, do you want to come along for pizza? Or heaven forbid, a girl would smile at me. Or I actually caught a football, an intramural football, and the quarterback praised me for it. Or some people nodded like they were interested in what I had to say in a group. These were not million dollar moments, but each one was an opportunity, five, 10, 20 seconds at a time, to experience that I was okay to feel included, to feel seen, to feel valued, to feel liked. And if I just stayed with that feeling, I learned, felt it in my body, felt it emotionally, took in the perspectives involved with it. If I just stayed with the experience, it felt like it was gradually sinking into me, as if it was sort of sticking to my ribs, so that over time, the pain I felt around the hole in my heart diminished because I was gradually filling it up. You know, initially that hole in my heart I felt a little bit like the construction site for one of those skyscrapers, you know, that dwarfs the dump trucks and bulldozers going in and out of it. But every day, I would sort of walk by that construction site and through a hole in the fence, I'd throw a few bricks in. Any single brick didn't change my life. But brick by brick, day by day, I was gradually filling in that hole in my heart to the point that I really started feeling different. And as you'll see later in this program, implicitly, I was also being on my own side. I was treating myself like I mattered. I was learning to train my attention because I had to rest my attention on these positive experiences. And I was being an agent. I was being active rather than passive, a hammer rather than a nail on my own behalf, all of which are bonus rewards for taking in the good. And as you'll see later, I was gradually sensitizing my own brain to the positive, making it increasingly sticky, as it were, to positive experiences and gradually altering the negativity bias that every human being is naturally endowed with. So I'll get into the details of this program as we go along, but right now the key point is that you have tremendous power a handful of times every day, just in the flow of daily life, to change your brain for the better, which will then change your feelings and your thoughts and your desires and your actions and your whole perspective on life for the better as well, with widening ripples for everybody whose life you touch. No one can stop you from using the everyday moments of daily life to weave lasting benefits into the fabric of your being. No one can take that away from you, even in the middle of a very, very difficult life. Here I'd like to quote from an ancient scripture from the Buddha. He says, Think not lightly of good, saying, It will not come to me. Drop by drop is the water pot filled. Likewise, the wise one, gathering it little by little, fills oneself with good. So, May you use the teachings in this program and the practices in it and your own reflections about it as ways, drop by drop, every day to fill your own water pot with good. So now I'd like to give you a feeling for this practice and its simplicity and its power. And then after we do this experientially, I'll explain how it works and why it's important. And then later on, we'll apply taking in the good to building key inner strengths inside you that you really need these days and to addressing any personal issues like anxiety or anger or loneliness. We all know how to take in the good. We've all had the experience of having a positive experience and staying with it and even intuiting or sensing somehow that it's going into us. What I'm interested in myself is how to do that really, really skillfully and well. Because as you'll see, we've got a brain that's very good at learning from the bad, but unfortunately, very bad at learning from the good. So we have to kind of give our brain some help so that it learns from good experiences, which again, as we'll see, are the primary way to build up positive inner strengths inside, including happiness. So in terms of helping your brain convert a fleeting experience into lasting neural structure, which is the underlying basis, if you will, of the inner, in a sense, muscles of confidence and happiness and optimism and love that we all want inside ourselves, if you want to turn fleeting mental experiences into lasting neural structure, there are three fundamental steps. 
First of all, you need to have the positive experience in the first place. That's the H step of the acronym HEAL, which comprises the four steps of taking in the good. In other words, you need to activate a positive mental state in the first place. Now, much of the time, you're already having it. And I'll go into this a little bit later. And all you need to do is just notice that it's already feeling kind of good. Or there's an opportunity right here in front of your nose to actually have a positive experience. And other times, you'll create this positive experience. So the first step, have a positive experience in the first place. Second step, now we're moving into installing into the brain these mental states that we've activated. So now in the second step, E for enrich, you're going to help the experience last. You're going to stay with it in your body. You're going to let it become more intense. You're going to see things about it that are new and fresh.